Right, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So XRP has been steadily climbing yesterday, as you guys uh, may have noticed the Bitcoin trend did also go up. We did see an increase in price for uh, you know most of the crypto market. XRP right now, uh, we're seeing an XRP trading at about 61 cents in the low. We did see XRP dip down all the way to 57, and we were seeing it hovering within the 59 cent range for a while yesterday morning. Uh, you know, just taking a look at the crypto space right now, we've got the market cap $1.42 trillion. So that's up a little bit uh, after we originally got that news, the Binance news sending the market crashing down. We got 24 hour volume that's down by about 25 percent uh, and Bitcoin dominance still hanging strong at 51.5. Bitcoin dominance not really uh, moving too much. We're seeing Bitcoin and other coins uh, kind of moving in tandem. And, you know, the other day. I was talking about this idea that, you know, back in the day, we used to have an altcoin season. Maybe we're getting to the point now where altcoin season is going to mean less and less. And uh, just because now so many more people are invested in cryptocurrencies and so many more people now uh, have done research and know more about different coins now more than before. So maybe we aren't even going to see something similar to what we've seen in the past where, you know, we'd see Bitcoin pump and then alt pump afterwards. That was big in 2017, 2018, if you guys were here for that. Right now, though, Bitcoin's up 2.48%. Uh, we got Ethereum up too, 2.25. Uh, XRP is up as well. Binance coin, though, Usually it's a pretty good performer, but because of the news we got yesterday, uh, we are not seeing that price rebound uh, the same way we're seeing the rest of the market rebound. If I bring up Binance coin here, you can see a big decline from yesterday. If the opening price was right in around here, we saw about a 15%, 15, 16% decline yesterday for Binance coin. And so right now it's hovering at around $232 per coin. Uh, but, you know, I got to say, <laughs> It really has not hindered the Binance, uh, the overall outlook for Binance coin. We have not gone below support. Uh, nothing to suggest that, uh, you know, the market is in turmoil. Uh, Binance, the exchange is still up and running. It wasn't like FTX where, uh, you know, if I were to bring up the FTT token uh, and, you know, when uh, Sam Bankman Freed was arrested and charged, uh, this is what happened to the FTT coin back last November uh, 2022. So really just kind of fell off a cliff here. And uh, that was down 95%. Um, so you compare that to Binance coin, and I don't think we are seeing the same kind of thing. People are coming out in support of CZ. As I was mentioning in yesterday's video, the price of Bitcoin, let's bring up Bitcoin right now real quickly. Price of Bitcoin is up a little bit too. So this is Bitcoin on the daily. And as you guys can see, we did see a sharp decrease in price off that news here. Just throw it on the four hour, the decrease and then the increase right back up. OK, so, um, you know, it didn't really affect the crypto market as much as, uh, you know, maybe the powers that be wanted it to affect the crypto market. We've still got greed now up a bit at 73. So this is all going to speak to uh, what we are to expect in the coming months. So at some point in 2024, we might actually see a Ripple IPO. This is actually an opinion piece coming from IPO.club here. Uh, it was a blog post highlighting a recent Crypto Eddie interview that she did. So discussing particularly an IPO for Ripple, I will leave this in the description of the video for you guys if you're interested. Talking about Ripple revenues here, uh, talking a little bit about the company. And then down here, Ripple stock. Ripple stock price has been hedging higher, though the price raise started before the judgment. The company has tendered up to 5% of its shares for $61.48, which is the price paid by investors at the Series C financing round back in December of 2019. Uh, so giving you guys a little bit of insight on what uh, the early investors paid. The recent ruling that classified XRP as a non-security digital asset, which is significant for Ripple and the XRP community and the broader crypto sector, has ignited discussions about the potential initial public offering for Ripple. This speculation comes after a court victory against the SEC following nearly three years of legal battles. So, you know, a lot of people are poised for this. And, uh, you know, we've been hearing uh, yeah, you can buy Ripple stock through Link2. I know that's one avenue for accredited investors to actually get into Ripple early. But, you know, when this stock hits and I think, you know, it all signs are pointing to it is going to happen during the bull run. We know the bull run is going to be happening between 2024 and 2025. So coming up very soon, in our opinion, they say it will take until the end of 2024 for the SEC case to be resolved. This means that Ripple will be able to resume its path to an ICO. So when the case is resolved, uh, and Crypto Eddie highlights that here, when the case is resolved, that is likely when we're going to start to see the inclinations. I mean, I don't know how much prep work Ripple has been doing in the meantime. I'm sure they've been... Uh, 
you know, preparing for this. I mean, this has been, uh, you know, part of their bigger plan to go public. So, um, you know, they seem pretty organized to me. I feel like they probably have, uh, you know, taken this opportunity, taken this time while they were being sued to, uh, you know, prepare for the IPO. And then boom, as soon as the case is resolved, they're going to apply for that and everything should line up after that, we are hoping. Uh, so 2024, of course, in the midst of a bull run makes total sense to me. Uh, you know, if I were to just pull out here on the Bitcoin chart and just zoom out here, you guys can see we're on our way to the next bull run, 2024, 2025. We're going to see some impressive gains. The market is moving up slowly but surely, but I do still think we are going to see uh, some retracements in the meantime because, you know, nothing goes straight up, guys. The Binance news, of course, was a bit of a catalyst to maybe get the plebes thinking a bit differently about crypto, but we are not going to be fooled. Ian Bin's here posting this, so apparently there is a private meeting that has been scheduled with the SEC. In a recent development, the SEC revealed a closed-door meeting scheduled for Thursday, November the 30th. Now, uh, I mean, I really don't know how much this matters at this point. The undisclosed agenda includes crucial topics such as the institution and settlement of injunctive action, administrative proceedings, resolution of li uh, litigation claims and other matters related to examinations and enforcement proceedings. Um, but guys, we've already got clarity. So anything that's going to come out of this meeting, I don't think is going to really uh, affect the XRP price. XRP has the clarity. We did see price rally for XRP based on that news in July. So anything that comes out now, I don't think is going to, uh, you know, really reflect on the price. Uh, but again, November the 30th, I guess uh, some people do have their eyes still on November the 30th. Uh, anyway, I wanted to thank Ian Bins for that. I think what's more interesting at this point now is how the crypto market is going to transform now that we've got guys like CZ taking a back seat. So the crypto sniper posted this, and I know there were a lot of people that came out on crypto Twitter yesterday, almost eulogizing uh, CC Binance in the crypto space, almost as if uh, he had passed away. And, you know, he's a great guy and he did really, really good for crypto. And, you know, many of the OGs out there, they really do understand how much CZ did. And I guess uh, he's a controversial figure. He did not follow the rules. He really did want to make cryptocurrency ubiquitous and he did it. The Crypto Sniper here posting this, my take on the Binance CZ, this guy is the other side of the spectrum compared to the FTX Sam Bankman Freed fraudsters who really did real damage. My suspicion is that he was too successful and under controlled by the cartel whose octopus tentacles must control it all. Now, this is kind of where I'm leaning to now. I feel like it was getting out of control. These guys could not uh, have uh, Bitcoin ETFs, for example, without having a majority control in Bitcoin because they want to manipulate the market and CZ was standing in their way. This was a takedown, the US version of what China did to Jack Ma on Alibaba. Lesson one, only be a certain amount successful or else Zio Kami cartel will take you down if outlandishly successful to the point of their control matrix being threatened, trouble comes your way. Lesson number two, never contribute to taking down a Zio money laundering pandemic political party funding scam such as NY SEC based FTX their criminal overlords will seek revenge for their laundering tool being spoiled. So a perspective that I was also thinking about yesterday, you can't be too successful. And when you are too successful, well, you got to pay the price. They're just not going to let you continue, uh, especially if they want to regulate cryptocurrency. There's just no way they can do it if you have majority control over, let's say, Bitcoin because you have accumulated so much and you hold so much through your cryptocurrency exchange. So what happens now? First of all, I guess I should show you guys this. Flip the chain posted this. Binance net inflows and outflows of digital assets five hours old. So this was posted uh, yesterday evening after we got the news. And as you guys can see, inflows are at 1.69 billion. This is the 24 hour inflow chart. But outflows, guys, negative 2.13 billion. Uh, and here's the 24 hour net flow. So this is 24 hour outflow, 24 hour inflow and 24 hour net flow is down 442.36 million. So we can see people are losing confidence in Binance now that CZ is not at the helm. The DOJ was even pushing a hard message yesterday after the takedown, courtesy of Chip here from On The Chain. Listen to this. And let me be clear. We're also sending a message to the virtual currency industry more broadly today and for the future. If virtual currency exchanges and financial technology firms wish to realize the tremendous benefits of being part of the U.S. financial system and serving U.S. customers, they must play by the rules. And if they do not, 
the U.S. government will take action. Now, I'm going to stop it there, but there's about another 20 seconds of a very colorful retort that uh, I think you guys should probably see. I will link this in the description of the video. I don't want to play it in this video for, well, lots of reasons. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to thank Stephen Chip for posting that. Uh, and so, you know, the timing couldn't be better, right? Crypto Insight UK posting this, the timing on the CZ takedown before Thanksgiving weekend is so perfect. The normies will be talking about how awful crypto is just as cryptocurrency is about to take off. Sounds very similar and also things that make you go, hmm. All right, the reason I say that is because let me go back to FTT token and uh, the Sam Bankman Freed news that we got last year happened before Thanksgiving of last year, and I remember I was uh, celebrating a friend's birthday, and uh, I remember he had a pretty big party, and I was talking to his parents, and, uh, you know, they were talking about crypto, and oh, look at how bad it is, and I, I, was, I just had to shake my head because I was thinking to myself, okay, these people really don't understand what's going on here, and sure enough, guys, we're getting it again. Fast forward to Thanksgiving 2023, and uh, we're in the same boat with uh, Binance CZ, the big message that the DOJ is sending, uh, but really... CZ got out with a pretty good deal, and unfortunately for us, now the power dynamic has shifted, or it will shift. Crypto Insight UK also posting this. Do you understand what is happening yet? Richard Tang, the new CEO of Binance, guys, is part of the WEF. This has also been revealed. I saw this yesterday from a few people. Uh, so he's connected to Lulu Exchange, which I mentioned yesterday, which is a Ripple partner to spread XRP-powered RippleNet technology. They have been since 2021. We also know uh, the WEF is partnered with Ripple. Now it has been revealed that Richard Tang, the new Binance CEO, is connected to the WEF. Uh, Jack the Rippler mentioning the same thing, XRP approved by Dubai's Financial Services Authority in the UAE. Richard Tang is working in the UAE. Richard Tang is the former Abu Dhabi financial regulator named as the new Binance chief. Uh, Binance wins an operational license in Dubai. Let me guess, this is just a coincidence. So also bringing this up to uh, the former Abu Dhabi financial regulator named as the Doom Binance chief. And he is, again, part of the WEF. Are you guys really surprised? Hmm. And so what's the bigger play here? James Seifert here bringing this up. Okay, new Grayscale S3 prospectus Bitcoin ETF filing to convert GBTC. Right off the bat, the biggest update in the plan change is to change the ticker symbol from GBTC to BTC, which was expected, skimming through the rest now. So on the news of the Binance uh, kerfuffle, we'll call it a kerfuffle, I guess, uh, Grayscale has, uh, you know, I guess, scrambled to change some issues for their filing. Now, they already have a BTC ETF. But here it says, you know, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust issues common units of fractional undivided beneficial interest, which represents ownership in the trust. The trust's purpose is to hold Bitcoin, which are digital assets and are created and transmitted through the operations of the peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Trust uh, investment objective for uh, value of shares to reflect the value of Bitcoin as determined by reference of the index price, less the trust expensive and other liabilities. While the investment in the iShares is not a direct investment in Bitcoin, the shares are designed to provide investors with a cost effective and convenient way to gain investment exposure to Bitcoin. So this is, uh, I guess this is the updated yeah, subject to completion here, dated November 22nd, 2023. Uh, so a GBTC Bitcoin trust has uh, already existed, but now we're seeing, I mean, this has been a big, I think, sticking point for guys like uh, BlackRock, Fidelity, all those other companies that want to issue uh, a bit Bitcoin ETFs is the fact that, you know, they have to have a prominent uh, domain, I guess we'll say, over Bitcoin in order to feel comfortable enough to offer this to their clients. And if they cannot control and it sounds corrupt as heck, but think about it. You know, th they control the market. They are the gatekeepers. They are the puppet masters. If they don't have the control over the uh, commodity, they will not do this. They will not release this. It's just not in their best interest. And so now with uh, CZ out of the picture and now with their WEF goon in the picture, well, I think things have changed now for, uh, you know, BlackRock and the like. So James Seifert, I wanted to thank him for posting that. Even Hester Peirce has come out and said, you know, there's no reason for us to stand in the way of a Bitcoin spot ETF. We have heard a lot of reporting in another matter that has gotten a lot of attention regarding a spot ETF, that there is ongoing conversations between issuers who have filed some of these applications and individuals at the SEC. And I wonder if you can shed any light on how much you as a commissioner might be involved in that or really if this is just happening at the lower uh, staff level at the moment. No, again, I really can't comment on that. But I think I've been very transparent that 
I've thought for many years now that that there is no reason for us to stand in the way of a spot Bitcoin exchange traded product. No reason to stand in the way. Well, why haven't you guys approved one yet? Very, very interesting news here. Wanted to thank Watcher Guru for that one. XRP Crypto Wolf guys bringing this up too. So now let's talk about the market a little bit. Let's talk about where crypto could be going next, especially XRP. It is one of my biggest holdings. I'm going to be sharing my XRP exit targets for my patrons at patreon.com slash working money channel, along with uh, about 15 other cryptocurrencies that I'm holding in the $10,000 plus portfolio, which, uh, you know, I still think there's time to get into some of these coins. I actually purchased a lot of that portfolio back in May when the prices were already kind of, uh, well, tr trading at a bit of a premium. They did decline since then. So, you know, my cost average is, uh, to be honest with you, if you guys join the Patreon after May, uh, your cost average is actually probably better than mine. That's okay though. I do still see uh, opportunity here. I do still think the market is going to retrace. Regardless of that guys, XRP is the biggest cryptocurrency in my portfolio, has been since the beginning. And what have we seen historically, okay? This from XRP Crypto Wolf. History hints that an 82% price increase in XRP is going to happen guys in December. So next month, as December approaches, XRP investors may be hopeful for an 82% increase, but cautious reflection on its historical performance reveals a more nuanced story. So what is this nuanced story? Uh, Crypto Rank here did give us some, uh, some details and I will list this in the description for you guys. Uh, as you guys can see, here are the XRP monthly returns. Now, I do believe that, uh, yeah, the chart's in here as well. Uh, but it's uh, larger here. So I'm going to uh, use that chart, uh, basically giving us some statistics about XRP price over the years. The, the numbers, the figures, they start uh, pretty much a full year in 2014. And as you guys can see, December has seen some interesting moves for XRP specifically. So uh, we even have uh, 2013 numbers here for XRP. 2014, we saw it up 118%. 2015, up 43.8%. Then 2016, it was down 4.07. But guys, check this out. 2017, up 818%. Then 2018, down. That was a bear year. 2019, that was a fairly flat year. Uh, and then we had the lawsuit, let's not forget, by 2020. In December, we got nailed. So 2020 was a bit of an anomaly year. And then we were in the lawsuit. 2021 and 2022 was a down year. So I feel like this section here is a bit of an anomaly. Uh, nevertheless, we did see a huge performance in 2017 with 818%. Now, what they're doing here is they're just taking an average, looking at where XRP could go if we took an average, and they're saying 82.7%, guys. And if we were to take all those Decembers, because let's not forget this is a cycle, and uh, you know, generally traders tend to be creatures of habit, we take a 61.4 XRP here, multiply that by 82.7%. So 0.614 times 82.7%. And what do we got? An increase of about 0.507. So we'll add that on 0.507 plus 0.614 equals an XRP price of about a dollar and 12 cents. So could we see that next month, guys? Uh, XRP surpassing a dollar? Well, I'm certainly hoping so. And if I throw a Fibonacci from this most recent price pump, and let's assume that this is the bottom here, and uh, let's bring the chart up here. A dollar 12 cents, that would get us pretty close to the 3.618, that would be at about uh, $1.14.8. So just under that, dollar 12 would bring us right there. I don't know, do you think it's possible? Do you think history will repeat itself? Or do we really have to see the bulls run before we can see these price increases? I mean, uh, you know, I'm not pushing things along. I've been a patient, patient boy for many years now. So let's not make mistakes in this bull run and let's think about our exit targets very, very carefully. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.